Hey, and welcome to module three. In this module, we will cover some of the things about how, how to monitor and how to do operations of your SAP PI system. Um, at least from, from the initial part about what are the things you can actually do uh, on the tenant once you're logged in. Um, so we have the, the integration content um, and here we can see all the different in interfaces that have been installed, what they do look like and what they are. And one important aspect of this is that it gives us the option. So if we are in here, we can see all the integration content that's been applied. And as we saw before, we have what are the different um, services we have here, what are the endpoints, what are the statuses. We have, we can see monitoring this and we can see what are the actually flow that's being configured to this. So we will just open it. Um, and we can see if there's any errors, we can see what are the errors about deploying this uh, specific content. So one of the, the smart thing we have here is we have some different logging levels. So we can change the logging level if it's none. So if we look at our monitor here, we can then see once we're calling this one, we should not get any message here. If we change it to info, it should log it. And we can see we have the info, we have the status locked. Um, it has a text mode here. But I'm not sure on how much it will just say, hey, hey, it has been completed. Oh, too much. Then we have, uh, so one other thing, yeah, so we have the different logging levels here. And if we, we select it all the way up to, to trace mode, this allows us to see what are the requests at all points in time of the, the process. So if we do a call here now, we can then see, okay, it took maybe a little longer. We got some trace information here. And now we can see what are the different flow. And if there was any of these that failed, we would see a red envelope and it would be fairly simple to see where the process was. So we can see at the locked content here, it's normally not giving that much information. I think this is just the normal uh, locking that we can see here. And then we have content lock, and this is really helpful when doing anything like this. We can see what are the API key that we're setting uh, when we're coming to this one. Um, so here we can see the, the text string that we're setting. Uh, here, when I'm clicking this, we will see the data as the raw payload before it's being sent to the receiving system. And then we can see where the, the information was coming, what was the, the iFlow name, the, the context, and stuff like that. Um, so that was also the message log. We can see all this information. We can, if we have attachments, so it's fairly simple in Groovy just to set an attachment that takes some of the payload and put it in as an attachment. And this makes it really easy for, for users to to handle it and uh, see what was being sent in this payload. So for error handling purposes, this makes a lot of sense because it's so much easier just to go in, see the data and then uh, develop it from there. Then you can also do some custom flow tracking that you can monitor all your own flows or set up some, some new rules. So let me just show you that. So in our monitor, if we have, we, we can specify all that uh, is currently failed or failed the, the last 24 hours, we can just set up an alert. We can see all the data from it. And if we want to, we can also delete it. Um, but you can only select one artifact at the time if you wanted to have multiple or packages that is not supported uh, at the moment. But you can set up some of these uh, custom alerts yourself just to figure out what have been sent. 
and I think with the same with the integration content uh, so you can see what are the different things we actually have installed on this one we talked about the trace level uh, that you can increase it production you probably just want it in in info and if it's just some flows that you don't want to see you could set them to none because then you would not see them in the lock uh, view uh, you have the option to set payloads as uh, debug um, then it will give some more information and i think that's the content we would normally see in the trace mode and you also have this if you want to see specific data it will then for the next 10 minutes lock all information all steps and you can then view this for the next hour until it's uh, deleted as we saw we did go into to, to the tree trace data to see what was being sent and we also have some of the sometimes the trace data is not there so you just have to take the text view and here you you it's uh, embedded so you can see it starts here and then processing each request you can see it's so we can see here it's setting the API key it's setting the content type as we said here and I guess there should also be a part where it's setting the payload um, maybe not so here we are calling the web service real destination URL maybe that's not a, oh yeah we can see we ha it has a set body part here also and this doesn't take that much uh, that long time we can see all the timings between all of these uh, informations uh, we can see i guess we can see how much long time this uh, request took to the uh, google engine or to the sap engine um, but yeah it's it's pretty useful to be able to see this <coughs> download it if you want to share it with someone else uh, understanding what's going on in your landscape and then the the admin part we got a few sections down here we got uh, security ma material um, I think we'll call it so we got audit lock and also system monitor <coughs> for the system uh, so the audit lock is pretty simple it just gives you inf information about what's happening who did what on the system with specific things in the monitoring system you can see all the requests that's made you can see http access and, and trace information on the server if there's anything um, there's a free tool you can download here um, that gives you some idea about these data and let me just show you how you normally view this so we will go into our system files let me just show the, the the log here here you can just see that we set it to trace actually it's the SAP user that set us to trace oh well and not me and here we can see our system files we can see the HTTP access log and we can download that let's just check the trace log see if there was anything we did so this will download a gzip file so we will just say open in folder and oh where did it go and then we say zip7 un unzip to a folder and then i guess the folder would be in the bottom seventeen here we got the folder we can view it in notepad plus plus and we can see whether the, the information here that was um, and sometimes obviously it can be a little difficult understanding what's going on in this but in other cases you may be able to find something that's useful and you can see why your system failed or you can see the HTTP access that was uh, not working and here you can download a collection of the most recent uh, log files um, and view it in the same way. It's a gzip file. The next one is uh, certificates. 
previously, you, if you wanted to deploy a certificate, you had to do it and ask SAP to deploy it. Now you have this uh, UI you can go through, add key stores and certificates. And let me just show you that part. That's the last part. So if we go to our monitoring application, we got our key store. And here we have, we can either create a new certificate uh, key pair. And we can say <coughs> the validity period of this certificate, how long it needs to be. But obviously, in most cases, you would not be creating it like this. You would probably just be, uh, and here you can see fingerprints, stuff like that on it. You would upload it. Uh, you can say add the key store a certificate. Um, I guess it's just a plain certificate key pair. Here you have uh, to add a key for it. And you can download some of this. Um, I guess that's just the public keys you have here. Another important part is the security material. Here you have the option to set some of these uh, parameters. So if you are going to use basic authentication for user, you can create a user and write the password for it. Then in your flow, you can then say, use this as the username. Um, so this is really also a, a good idea to do, or the, the only way you can enter username because you need to specify them here to get that uh, that data. Um, and just also, so you also have the option to do some of this in uh, the Eclipse plugin. And here you also have some different views on, on monitoring the system. You can see message monitoring. But I guess that's not really the important thing. You can see what's deployed. And if you want to deploy adapters, you can do it from here. Adapters, I guess that's the only one where it makes sense to use this one uh, for it. Um, you can see some of the, the deployed nodes and some log trails. Um, for the last, last information on the node. Um, so it, it gives you a little, but I think the only thing you actually need here is to deploy uh, communication channels or deploy adapter modules. One other thing in monitoring um, is this part. So if you have enabled your system to be able to use CPI content uh, to CPI content on PO, you would be able to see it in here. Um, then you can select different profiles. You have transport, you can specify how you want to do transport on this. And then if you want to get uh, data from your CPI or your PI system, you can specify uh, that information here together with um, a, a cloud uh, connector identif uh, identification. So here I guess you get the different transport mode, MTA download, uh, transport management. So uh, yes, I hope this is uh, helpful. Thank you.